Now the second rule that organisms must follow in order to be considered, of course, living things, is that they must maintain order inside their cells and inside their bodies. So I'm just going to write order right here. And what the heck do I mean by maintain order? Like, I don't know, line up in a line like the, you know, army or something? Well, whenever I say maintain order, I mean maintain some sort of organization. So remember the first rule said that living things are made up of cells which contain something inside them called DNA. So say you have a group of cells just laying on the ground and each one of them has some DNA in it like that. Well, this would be a living thing, right? Well, no. Why is that? Because they don't have any order. Unlike your body, which is a very organized living thing, believe it or not, I know you may not think that because, I don't know, you're looking around your room and everything's kind of a mess, but you have very much order and organization in your body. What do I mean by that? Well, whenever you get cut and you bleed or you break a bone and it needs to heal, your body heals itself to kind of put yourself back in the pieces that you were before. So that is why you need very you know you need to be ordered and organized instead of just a big hunk of cells sitting on the ground so that's why a big hunk of cells would not be considered a living things in scientific terms and your body which is very ordered organized would now the third rule organisms must follow is that they must regulate their system so let me just go ahead and write regulation believe it or not it's kinda of hard to talk and write at the same time so what I mean by living things regulate their systems well say you go outside and it's snowing we draw some beautiful snowflakes right here oh, that's pretty good looking believe it or not and whenever you go outside like I said your body is going through a process of regulation well, what the heck do I mean by that? Well, a couple things happen whether you are aware of it or not. First of all, your body starts to shiver, shiver, and blood starts getting pumped through your body to your arms, legs, and head. And this happens because your body goes through regulation. Each cell is kind of focused on maintaining that internal temperature. So the reason that your body wants to maintain an internal temperature is because if it got too cold then it would freeze and die so of course you shiver and you move to generate more body heat and what this kinda does is even though the environment is not suited for you your body is gonna regulate itself and make itself better able to survive so whenever I talk about regulation that's what I'm talking about maintaining an internal it doesn't have to be temperature but any internal conditions that make this organism more able to survive now the fourth rule that an organism must follow in order to be considered of course a living thing is that living things must respond to signals in the environment so I'm gonna write respond to signals in environment I won't write that but you guys know what I mean so what the heck do I mean by responding to signals well I respond to a traffic signal when I'm driving but that's not exactly what I'm talking about what I'm talking about is say that we have something that's clearly non-living like a rock. Well, if we go ahead and we kick this rock, well, what's it going to do? It's going to do nothing. That's because it's just chilling there. It's like, oh, I'm a dumb rock. Of course, it wouldn't say that. But it's not going to do anything because it's a non-living thing. Well, let's go ahead and compare this to an organism or something that's living like, I don't know, uh, maybe your grandma. So let me dry some beautiful hair on her, and I don't know, maybe she has a cane. What happens when you go up and you hit her with a stick or you kick her? Well, unlike the rock, she's going to get mad, and she's going to be like, Oh my, Bucky, you're the worst grandson ever, and, and I don't know, maybe she's going to yell at you, maybe she's going to uh, throw her cane at you. She's going to respond to signals from the environment in a couple different ways. So that's what I mean to responding to signals from the environment. Non-living things don't at all. Living things do. Now, typically with animals, we'll talk about plants more later on, but animals have these five senses that we'll cover later on, but those are the senses that allow them to become aware of environmental changes and respond appropriately. Now, if you're thinking, okay, that makes sense with, you know, maybe your grandma and animals, but what about things like, 
um, I don't know, plants? Because plants don't yell at you when you kick it. Well, believe it or not, plants do respond to signals from the environment. And the easiest explanation is if you ever looked at a plant that was actually growing towards the sun, you can see that this is indeed responding to a signal from the environment. The environment, as simple as it is, would be the sunlight, and the action of growing towards the plant is a signal, or excuse me, is a response to that signal. And we'll talk about why plants do this, and we'll talk about, you know, photosynthesis, and that's kind of a tongue twister, photosynthesis, there we go, later on. But just remember, that rule number four is all living things, no exception, respond to signals from their environment.